Hi, I'm Extra Life, and this is my modular synthesizer. And I'd like to build a new sequencer for it. One that lets me make longer sequences with more variation, and lets me create random new ideas at the touch of a button. So today will be the start of a new series, as I design and prototype each of the elements of this sequencer, and then hopefully put them all together. I've built software sequencers before, and I really like the way that they worked, but doing one in hardware for the Eurorack format will be a new challenge for me. We'll build up the prototypes on the breadboard, and as we get the various pieces put together, we'll move towards more and more permanent prototypes, and hopefully at the ends, we'll even be able to manufacture our own printed circuit board. We'll start with the Arduino Uno, which is a great prototyping platform for all kinds of applications. In this case, it'll serve as the main brain behind the sequencer operation and we'll add components as needed to enable it to interface with other types of hardware, including the synthesizer. I started by making some drawings of what I wanted the sequencer to actually look like when it was done. Here's my first sketch. You can see it's got 16 buttons for individual steps, four controls on the right for the individual parameters, some inputs, a seven segment display for note data, and some outputs for the sequence. Then I started to think about what electronic components we'd actually need to do this stuff how many switches, how many buttons, how many diodes, so on and so forth. I tried to make a list of all the stuff and all the functions and how they'd need to be connected together, and I came up with a rough schematic of the various parts we'd need. Here's the brain box, our Arduino chip, the ATmega328P. Here's the display driver with some transistor multiplexing. Here's two input-output expanders for the buttons and the LEDs in the front. Here's the analog-to-digital converter, which makes the 0 to 10 volt sequence output. And here's some flash memory that will store the sequence data itself. Then I got on the computer and started designing the actual front panel of the sequencer to get a better idea of how all the components would fit in relation to one another and how much space I'd actually need. Then I started to lay out the actual schematic I had designed in the computer, but I pretty quickly realized that I was designing stuff that I had no idea whether it would actually work. And to start laying it out on a printed circuit board was, I don't know, a little bit premature. So, it's time to take a step back and start on the breadboard, real simple, and just see if this stuff works. Now, the Arduino is a digital microcontroller, meaning it speaks ones and zeros. And in order to interface with the analog world of the synthesizer, it needs a digital-to-analog converter. This is the MCP4821, which I've selected as a 12-bit digital-to-analog converter that works over SPI, or Serial Peripheral Interface. SPI is a serial data protocol that lets different integrated circuits or chips talk to each other. The master device sends out a clock signal, outputs binary commands, and receives binary data over three shared lines common to each device. Additionally, each device has a chip select line that tells it when it should be active and responding to commands. This means that many serial devices can be connected to a single microcontroller using only a few wires. All we have to do is look up the datasheet for this particular chip, and then we can locate which pins we need to provide power and serial communication, and where we get the output. Then we just match those to the corresponding pins for the SPI interface on our particular Arduino board, which is the UNO. Now we have all the information we need, we can build our first prototype circuit connecting our analog to digital converter to the serial output of the Arduino. Now we can take this Arduino sketch, which I found online. It just takes a counter and goes from 0 to 4096 and outputs that voltage to the digital to analog converter, which should turn an LED on and off, well, sort of fading in and out. All we have to do now is hook up our USB cable to our Arduino and upload the sketch. Awesome. Now our LED is slowly turning from off to on, and then off again, using the analog output of this pin, and a series resistor to limit the current from it. And if we check the voltage across the legs of the LED, we can see that it slowly climbs from zero to, oh, I don't know, maybe about two volts. This is because the Arduino is running on five and 3.3 volt digital logic signals. 
For our analog synthesizer, we need a much higher voltage between about 0 and 7 or 8 volts, so we need to amplify this signal somehow. The Arduino only uses these 5 volt signals because it's designed to run on USB power, but in our application it's not going to be running off of USB, it's going to be using the power supply of our synthesizer, which happens to be plus and minus 12 volts DC. Fortunately, the voltage regulator on the Arduino accepts anywhere between 7 and 15 volts, so all we really have to do is connect it to our power supply, and then we can use those plus and minus 12 volt signals to amplify our output signal. Now our LED is slowly turning off and on, and our Arduino isn't connected to anything over USB. It's using the power signal from our synthesizer, and then using the voltage regulator on board to step that down. So now we can take the output, the voltage coming off of this LED, or off of the pin that goes to the LED, and amplify that using another chip called an op-amp, this TL072. Awesome! Now our LED is lighting up a little bit brighter because we're feeding it a higher voltage signal. I've set up just a regular non-inverting amplifier circuit here using two feedback resistors to control the negative feedback of the op amp. If you want to learn more about that, just Google non-inverting operational amplifier. Let's test the voltage on this. It's getting a little bit higher, but it's hard to tell how much we're actually seeing. The multimeter isn't really the best tool for measuring changing signals, so let's use the oscilloscope. Unfortunately, I don't have proper oscilloscope probes, so I'm just going to use these alligator clips. And if we hook them up to the output of the DAC and the ground pin of our power supply, we can see that it's rising in a pretty smooth linear wave, and what we would expect a triangle wave to look like if it was faster. And it's going from zero, right in the middle of the screen, to up to right near the top of the screen. Depending on how we scale it, it might even go way off the screen. And at 2 volts per division, we're seeing it rise right up to about 7.5 or 8 volts there at the top of the screen. So we're in the right ballpark, and we can adjust it from here if we need to. Now that we've got a reasonable output voltage, let's hook our circuit up to our synthesizer and see what it does. Righteous. And you can hear that we've got a good range from very low bass frequencies all the way up to really squealy trebles. So I think we've got enough voltage differential to make this work. So now that our circuit connects to our synthesizer, we can start writing some software for the microcontroller that does something interesting besides just make a rising tone. We can make it play a musical scale, or even have some external control of the sequence that it plays. But I think we'll leave it there for today. Thanks for watching, I hope you found that interesting and maybe informative, and we'll see how far we can take this project. See you next time.